So ARM has just announced a whole bunch of new CPU and GPU designs. So we've got two new CPU cores, which I cover in a different video. And in this video, I want to look at the new GPU, the Immortalis G925. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the new Immortalis GPU and the key things here are that complex games like Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact and several others which we'll talk about uh, in a moment have got major improvements in their overall performance uh, up to 72% there we can see for Call of Duty Mobile. But it's not only about better graphics, we can see here that there are other improvements as well. For example, when it comes to AI and machine learning, 36% better inference, 30% less power uh, when you look at the leading games available for Android and up to 52% ray tracing uh, performance increase for intricate objects. And we'll dive into that in a moment. However, notice what it says at the bottom there, compared on ARM reference platforms for the Immortalis 925, that's the name of the new GPU, and that lines up with the new naming for the CPUs. Remember, it's now the Cortex-X 925, if you had a chance to see my other video. And it's a 14 core one versus the Immortalis G720, which was a 12 core one. Now, as I mentioned in the CPU video, these uh, are now targeting three nanometers, which means there is some more leeway for performance and for uh, power efficiency and that has allowed ARM to generate uh, a new GPU but it's got 14 cores so normally the trend has been in the other direction now we're going up to 14 cores compared to 12 for the reference design for last year and that is because three nanometers allows that and when you do that plus the architectural changes to the Immortalis 925 then you get this uh, increase in performance across the board. And here are some numbers. These are ARMS numbers uh, in increased mobile gaming performance. Call of Duty, 72%. Diablo Immortal, 46%. Fortnite, 29%. The Day After Tomorrow, 39%. Genshin Impact, 49%. Uh, PUBG Mobile, 36%. And Roblox, 46%. So significant gaming gains across the board with the new Immortalis G925. Now that's pretty impressive and we'll dive into a couple of the reasons of why ARM are able to do that with this new GPU. And the first reason they're able to do this is because of a new piece of technology called Fragment Prepass. Now all 3D graphics of course works on an X, Y and Z coordinates and the further away something is the further down the Z axis it is. And of course, the chances are it's going to be covered by something in front of it. And what you don't want to do is to spend time processing the things that are hidden because that wastes performance uh, and wastes energy. Now, ARM has a new technique in the GPUs for removing hidden surfaces, surfaces that are hidden by other things. And in doing so, it therefore spends up to 43% fewer CPU cycles. Now this is CPU cycles, not GPU cycles. So remember any uh, kind of 3D system, whether that's on a laptop, on a PC, and a smartphone, you've got the CPU doing something. The CPU will call graphic uh, APIs. There'll be a graphics driver, which will talk to the GPU. And the graphics driver has to do certain things. And some of the things the graphics driver has to do can be a bit uh, CPU intensive. We'll talk more about that in a moment. So now with this new hidden surface removal technique called fragment prepass, okay, it supersedes other uh, kind of uh, hidden surface removal techniques, early Z testing, hierarchical Z testing, and so on, as they are listed here. And it improves those earlier techniques, culling more occluded fragments and improving performance. Now, one of the big things that's important here is the geometry does not need to be sorted. So in the past, one of the ways these techniques would work was if that the geometry was sorted according to the Z, the Z buffer, so that you knew that if something was 
further along the Z buffer, then that could give you an advantage in working out whether it would be seen or not. But of course, when the scene is drawn and passed over to the, uh, the graphics driver, it's not necessarily sorted. It's just drawn however the uh, scene was created by the programmer. And so a lot of the time is spent inside of the CPU driver sorting that data and doing other things. Whereas that is no longer necessary. The data no longer needs to be sorted along the Z or the Z axis. And all of this fragment pre-pass is done in hardware, not in software, it's all done in hardware. And that frees up up to 43% of the CPU in actually no longer needing to do that. And then as an upshot of that, you get these fragments that are removed uh, in hardware, which means then time in the GPU doesn't need to be spent on uh, rendering those fragments, which later turn into pixels, because now they have been eliminated. And the result is that you get these big performance boosts in complex games. You won't see it so much in games that have lower geometry, but games that have high geometry will now see this boost. And another thing I mentioned is there is this 52% increase in ray tracing in performance when you have uh, intricate objects. Intricate objects means grass, leaves, foliage, uh, that kind of stuff, where there are lots and lots of them. And it's not so important that each blade of grass casts the shadow, car, you know, it has the right translucency, has the right, you know, re reflections than every other blade of grass. You still need a level of accuracy because obviously it still needs to look like foliage and grass and so on, but it doesn't need that same off. So there is now this ability to trade, allows the developer to trade off accuracy with performance. And so that can be really useful when some of these things don't need so much uh, detail. And if you do that, as you can see here, reduced accuracy can give 52% more uh, performance, 57% less memory traffic. Of course, you can set the dial the other way and you can still get high accuracy, but there are still improvements in performance even under those circumstances. There are lots of ray tracing improvements in the G925. And of course, machine learning and AI are important as well. So here you can see these are real world workloads, image classification, image segmentation, object detection, super resolution, natural language processing, text to speech, all of these models when running on the Immortalis 925 with 14 cores offer significant up to 50% improvements in performance compared to the previous generation. And talking of which, uh, ARM also pointed out they do work close with Unity in all optimizations and working uh, for uh, our, our Immortalis GPUs using Unity, including the Unity uh, ML framework that's good for doing kind of, you know, ML, uh, you know, agents inside of your games. And they've been working with Unity, so an up to 44% increase uh, in performance uh, because of the techniques like they're using Int8, for example. So the important thing is here is that the new GPU is good for uh, machine learning techniques, as we've seen all these things here, image segmentation, object detection, and so on. But it's also good for gameplay. So that the as ML becomes more and more, ML agents become more and more part of gameplay, they will work well with the new GPU. Finally, a thing about naming, this is the Immortalis 925. That means that you are guaranteed to have 10 cores or more. So when an OEM, whether that's MediaTek or whoever, create an SOC with the Immortalis, if it says Immortalis 925, you know it's got at least 10 cores and it's got ray tracing enabled. If for the mainstream market, an SOC comes with, with less cores, six to nine cores, then it will be called the Mali G7 25 and won't have ray tracing and then for the low end or for other applications you know like uh, in car entertainment systems or whatever then you get one to five cores and that will be called the mali g625 okay so there you have it the immortalis g925 are you excited to see this in any upcoming socs love to hear your thoughts in the comments if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up and if you like these kinds of videos then i invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. As I said, don't forget that CPU video that I've also just released covering the new Cortex-X and Cortex-A CPUs. I suppose that's it. I'll see you in the next one.